and you get us the results. Because as I always tell my students, when you pass your exams, when you excel, that is how I become successful as well. Because if you don't do well and you don't excel, then it doesn't give me that opportunity, then it doesn't give me that urge, then it doesn't cause me to continue because it's like, then I didn't do best. But if I put in my work, I put in my effort, and you also do what you have to do, boom, we are on the same page, boom, the result is going to be what's great. So the first thing I wanted to deal with all the brands, before even we get into the nitty-gritty of the subject that you are going to write, the subject that you are preparing for, is your mindset. Please, from today, I don't care whether it is late or it is not late, whether it is early or it's not early. I want you to tell yourself, I want to be the best, period. Stop the mindset of 50 plus 1%. Stop the mindset of, I just want to pass and go away. Stop the mindset of, oh, there is, it is just a little effort and I can do it. No, you need a huge effort. So build on your mindset, work on your mindset. That is the first thing I want you to look out for. That's the first thing. So tell yourself you want to be the best. Tell yourself you want to be the best. Because when you have the mindset of being the best, you're going to put in the effort. The reason why I max out a lot, the reason why sometimes people wonder how come I'm able to teach all of these subjects and um, literally it's like, quote unquote, I'm flawless. Yeah, there could be challenges somewhere, but quote unquote, I'm flawless in all of these subjects. How am I able to do that? How am I able to move from one subject to another with the same thing, with the same flair, with the same tonation, controlling the pitch and everything? How am I able to do that? It's because I want to be the best. Not the best financial reporting lecturer alone. Not the best corporate reporting lecturer alone. I want to be the best business lecturer. That is why I am doing what I'm doing. And everything I'm doing is filmed. Everything I'm doing is available online. And I wouldn't want somebody to watch me and say, what the hell is this? Who is this guy? Doesn't know anything. Is this messing up there? No, I don't want to hear that. I want somebody to watch it and say, whoa, had I seen this guy early? I'm going to max out on this guy. I'm going to give this guy an opportunity. I want to be the best. That is why I put in more effort. So the first thing you want to deal with is your mindset. Because if you have the wrong mindset, this executive revision masterclass is not going to be for you. Because that is why the price is the way it is. It is not about the number. I don't want to sit and then 70 people are sitting down and you are talking. Some people cannot even hear you. Some people cannot get where to sit. And I charge them some 50 cities and they come and sit down. They hear me for one day and go away. No, that is why it is a stage. That is why it is a process because it is not just about memorizing, chewing something, listening to something. It is about attitude that you have. It is about the preparation you put in to be able to position you for the end. Examination. So the first thing, all the best, I want you to know in this executive revision masterclass is to have the right mindset. If you have the right mindset that this thing I can do it, that this thing I want to be the best, that this thing we're going to make it to happen, then I can guarantee you with my guide, with my mentorship, with my provision, with the things that we are going to be providing for you. And after you go through these four sessions or segments of the Executive Revision Masterclass, I can guarantee you that you will courageously get into the exam or courageously write the exams and successfully pass the exam so that you can be joyful. So the first thing is that, your mindset. In addition to mindset, one of the things I see a lot is complacency. Complacency. Now, this usually comes from students who have failed an exams and they are rewriting or resetting for the exams. Chances are many of you or many students who fail at exams and they have to rewrite the exams, chances are a lot of them don't, don't attend lectures. Why don't they attend lectures? Because they think they know the thing already. They think that, oh, they have studied already. They went for lectures already. So with some small revision, they can do it. It goes back to the mindset. It goes back to the mindset. So you've got to understand that if really you're going to
to pass these exams, you got to stop that arrogance. Literally, you got to stop that complacency attitude. You got to. You, you have to act as though you know nothing. I was telling somebody recently that who failed an exams and um, um, had to reset for the exams, and the person was like, "Oh, Shira, I don't want to attend lectures because um, uh, I know the thing already." And I said, "Listen, you don't know anything." And so I have to talk her out of it and I explained to her and she was thinking about the money she's going to pay again for tuition but you're forgetting that you're paying examination fee. How do you pay an examination fee without paying a tuition fee, without attending lectures? Why do you do that? Why? It's like going to court without a lawyer and you're not a lawyer as well. Okay, you go to court without a lawyer and you don't know anything about law or you think you, are, you can read some law books and stand and defend yourself. No, it doesn't happen that way. So why do you go to court without a lawyer? So you cannot register for the exams, pay for registration for the exams and not attend lectures. It is havoc. Because I've said this in, in many of my videos, when we put 10 people in a room and ask them to study for the ICA examination or for any professional qualification examination, 10 people in a room, study on your own, chances are only one person will pass out of the 10 people. Because it takes discipline, it takes focus, it takes direction, it takes a certain spirit that you can really do this on your own and map out on your own. So please, if this is your first time, don't get complacency in your way. If you are resitting for the paper, don't make complacency come your way. Please, as far as you failed in the exams, it means you don't know anything. You don't know anything. Some of you, the reason why you fail an exam and you fail again, it's because of the wrong mindset you have. And second, because you are too complacent. You are too comfortable. You think that, yeah, I've studied it before and I can just uh, use one week and prepare for the examination. Dude, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. So please, I don't know where you are. I don't know the stage you were in. I don't know what it is that you are doing. But you've got to make sure you don't allow complacency to get into your way. Very important. So as you are working on your brain, working on your mindset, working on your attitude, working on the things that you're doing, you've got to make sure that you aren't complacent. That is very important. That is very important. The third thing that I want to talk about you is discipline. It's discipline. Very importantly, one of the things you've got to understand is that discipline is going to be critical for your journey. You see, passing this examination means you've got to discipline yourself. Now, people make a lot of excuses and say, Inshira, I don't have time. Inshira, my wife. Inshira, my husband. Inshira, my children. Inshira, my this. Inshira, my that. Inshira, my work. Inshira, my this. Inshira, my that. Please, you cannot prepare for the examination and pass for the exams if you don't discipline yourself and discipline how you use your time. You see... There is always a myth or there is a myth about time and people call it time management. You cannot manage time because you don't have control over it. The time you used to watch this video is no more. It is gone. So there is nothing like time management. What we have is self-discipline. So you've got to discipline yourself and decide that the 24 hours I have, this is what I am going to do with this. You cannot manage time, you can manage money. So if you are going to pass this exams, in addition to working on your mindset, coming out of your comfort zone, you've got to discipline yourself. That means it is not everything that you can do. That means it is not everywhere you can go. That means it is not everything that you can say, everywhere you can sit. 
It means you've got to discipline yourself. Now, that boils down to my favorite word that I always use, sacrifice, period. Period. As I always say, the wealthiest man in the world has 24 hours. The poorest person in the world has 24 hours. All of us are given the same grace, the same mercy, the same uh, wisdom, the same opportunity. The way we utilize the 24 hours is based on the way we have disciplined ourselves to utilize the 24 hours. So please, if you're going to pass the exams, if you're going to work hard on yourself, if you're going to position yourself strategically, then you've got to discipline yourself. You've got to be ready to sacrifice. You've got to be ready to put in the work. You've got to be ready to put aside everything. Because it is not easy. Financial reporting will nail you down. Public sector will put you down. Financial management, you cannot go away with it. Strategic case study, it is going to be tough. Corporate reporting, it's going to be tough. Advanced audit, it's going to be tough. Taxation, it's going to be tough. Financial accounting, it's going to be tough. But the only way you're going to make it easy on yourself is when you study. And the only way you can study is to discipline yourself and lock some time up. You cannot please everybody in the world and become successful. No. No. You cannot be at every event and still have time and study for your exams. You cannot do everything for people and still have time for your exams. You cannot be frivolous with your time being on social media.